the Independent Investor Channel here for our weekly update on Aduro Clean Technologies. Very important for us to continue to deliver on a consistent message here with Aduro at a time where it's probably the most difficult to do so. Um, even with the marked progress um, in the company uh, over the last couple of years of covering the company, at least going back until fall of last year, um, it has been one of the stories that we know is going to unfold um, over the long term. Uh, Aduro is not one of those companies that you're going to be able to just trade around a quarter. It's not one of those things that you're going to be able to um, look at and, and catch some sort of wave hype. Uh, Aduro is, is a value company. And I want to put that out there first and foremost. I've disclosed, and for you guys that have made your way to the message for the first time, um, I'm a bullish share owner of the company. With that, I try to deliver upon uh, a, a neutral perspective. Um, if there is negative to report out on uh, in my perspective, I will share that, convey that to the grander audience. I don't think it does anybody any good to come online and, and try to generate hype around a, a name like this because I think Aduro um, generates enough activity and churn around the name. Why? Because their technology is that good. It is just that good. Coupled with the fact that Aduro is unknown uh, amongst the investing community, and I do mean unknown, um, the share volumes, albeit have increased as I have monitored the stock action uh, over the last, let's say, 18 months or so, um, but they are not even close uh, to where uh, this company needs to be to reflect the current opportunity and the value proposition that Aduro brings to the table. What does it mean to be an Aduro investor? I'm, I'm going to convey a few things for you, and I, I share these things openly so that you can glean over a 30-minute video how I truly feel uh, about this investment for me uh, and how potentially this could be viewed uh, by you in this uh, unknown opportunity. Um, unfortunately for a lot of people, this will fall on deaf ears. Um, this, this will uh, be a prove-it story. Uh, until it's too late. Um, it will be a too good to be true story. I totally understand the skepticisms and you're entitled to feel how you feel. Um, like I've said before, and I like to set a good baseline, my intent here is not to persuade you in any direction. Uh, I think we've gone beyond that with the um, social media content creators, at least that I associate with. Uh, you're going to get a, a different viewpoint um, on different equities. Um, there's a few of us in the space here, uh, myself and Mariush, uh, Penny Queen, uh, Carbononics, just to name a few who cover the, the the space and have been trying to convey this message as objectively as we can over the last, um, really the, the, the last couple of years where Aduro has thought that it would be or it was timely enough to actually start to present their story to the forward-facing audience. Uh, Aduro is a publicly traded company. I want to remind you guys just this week, I did um, release my video cross-comparing Aduro to the other 20 companies that were named in the advanced chemical recycling space. Uh, very telling. Um, not so much one of those things to where I was excited to, to see a Duro named with some of the who's who in the plastic recycling um, uh, industry, which they have earned that. Uh, I felt like the uh, company that they were put in was very vast, which would require investors to be very careful, be very diplomatic. Um, and very cautious in approaching this developing space. Um, we've known that there was a need in the plastic recycling space for a long, long time. The fact of the matter is the chemical um, recycling and advanced recycling methods just have not existed. We have relied on traditionally uh, ineffective ways, specifically uh, um, paralysis, which I've identified 
uh, in the majority of the companies that I covered in that list of 20 that Adura was named with. The problem with that method is that it has been proven out to be extremely inefficient, both on the production side as well as the economic side. Okay, It costs too much to run that system. This is why uh, with the light regulations and oversight, it has just been cheaper to uh, allow those um, hard to recycle plastics to be subjected to our landfills and our oceans. That's just the way of things. That's the way things have transpired over the last, let's just call it 50 years uh, and or more as this problem has compounded itself and plastic produce, production has increased significantly every year, year over year. Uh, which means that more of those plastics are subjected to the uh, staunch reality that those uh, uh, hard to recycle plastics could not be recycled. Um, the method by which um, uh, were being used to to actually recycle um, those those hard to recycle plastics have just been proven proven to be inefficient. And so the stock in Enduro has um, modestly raised this year. I think the stock last check was up around 17% uh, this year. So a modest increase in what I feel like is a little bit of notoriety on a lot of forward-facing information that Enduro has released to the grander audience. Enduro has hit this thing hard. Um, they are generating revenue on their uh, customer engagements as we speak. Uh, Aduro Sports 3, uh, not one, not two, but three verticals, my friends, uh, that two out of the three, best of my knowledge and my review, are uh, actively generating revenue now. Uh, now, the revenue is not something to jump up and down about. They are in the uh, testing phase and uh, customer uh, out outreach uh, phase and the testing with each of those respective uh, clients. And we want to make sure that Aduro has uh, ample time to continue with those customer engagement phases as they are in now, but to be generating revenue with such a huge adjust addressable market is promising at, 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 at the least. It is promising. Um, now, for you guys that have covered me and covered the story to understanding what type of investor I am, I am not an exclusive uh, microcap investor, okay? I'm a value investor. Um, I, I have significant wealth put aside in investments that are in the portfolio. They'll remain there, and they'll remain there for my life and into follow-on generations. Aduro, for me really gives that value opportunity uh, before the opportunity is discovered. I really want you to think about that for a moment when you are listening to my video that I did this week on the other competitors in the space, minus Honeywell and Chevron. I really didn't include them in. I'm share owners in those wonderful companies. Um, but the other 18, as we were able to glean through the list and, and, and parlay half of those companies as private companies, and the other half having gone public here into public markets and have just been on an absolutely atrocious ride, subjected to, yeah, headwinds in the macroeconomic environment as disclosed by most every CEO in their CEO comments, but I think furthermore, there was a time frame in 2020 and, and a little bit before that where the, we, were, we were unfortunately subjected to market hype. And a lot of these companies just thought that they could just get in and, and, and acknowledge that they were getting in over their skis financially and that that would somehow make it up. And the environment has, has flipped in that these are very, very difficult markets now. Uh, companies are not being given favor. They are being provided scrutiny uh, in 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 scrutinize their individual ability to stand on their own. Now, if they want to seek out financing, a lot of these companies are actually seeking out financing rounds in the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. And in some cases, 
that matches or almost matches their total market cap and valuation at present. That's scary times. If you're looking at it from an investor's perspective, I mean, you could inv be investing in uh, a vacuum for many, many years with such high capex and opex to support these initiatives, all the while the purity of the initiative is quite good. Uh, the promise of the plastic recycling space is quite good. Uh, I just fear that a lot of these companies have got in way, way too quickly and and, and subjected themselves to um, you know massive, massive debts. And to service those debts, some of those contracts, I mean, I look at Pure Cycle and the debt servicing on those contracts that they've written are, are scary. And, uh, you know, the the bulls of those companies are going to say, well, they're going to make up for it in the right uh, in the right time by selling their product. As a lot of the themes of the companies that I reviewed uh, over the course of that review would suggest that a lot of those companies have finalized um, facilities that are actually producing um, um, uh, product that can be sold and reused to the to the circular economy, my friends. That's a fact, and that's an exciting fact. Okay, whether or not those systems are going to play out in the long term by deploying um, what what I contend to be those more legacy types of technologies, um, uh, paralysis being that in in that the high energy and high input. Uh, and and the high cost to run those operations even makes sense economically. Those numbers are not disclosed to share owners to understand how much, um, how efficient they're actually being by deploying those processes. They just want everybody to understand that they're going to continue to spend hundreds of millions of dollars and that somehow, some way, sometime down the line, that it's going to pay off. And a lot of these companies, shoot, I saw revenues on one of the companies that $56,000. They had losses of $5.75 million. Um, that was a reoccurring theme where they were just dabbling in making a little bit of top-end revenue by selling their product, but the but the bottom end was mounting losses to the tune of multi-millions. Now, whether or not they can flip the script on this, I, I wish them all the best. Me personally, I'm not invested in those companies. But I look at it from a diplomatic eye because I was attempting to compare what they had with what Aduro has. And quite frankly, I was able to glean that there was no real comparison. And it was quite frankly unfair to Aduro uh, to, to include some of those other uh, companies that were listed in that, uh, that group, some actually being subjected to uh, current litigation. Uh, so, you know, we'll stick close to the vest with delivering on what it is that I see with my lens. Hell, I could be wrong too. Um, you know, it's up to you to do your own due diligence on this, but certainly looking to gain consensus uh, on whether or not I'm completely off my rocker and looking at this opportunity and looking at the value proposition, which in my mind looks very, very, very rich at this point. Um, now, I'm on an island with that perspective, and there's a few within the network who would share uh, in the Aduro clean technologies opportunity being very, very bright, but it is the most difficult time to do that when there is no organic churn in the company. There's no buying interest right now per se on the environment. Okay, The last stock transaction that I heard just came as early as this week with uh, the the uh, CEO exercising his right to 650,000 more uh, stock options that he had from from many moons back, and I'm I'm happy for the guy. Um, Ofer's done a fabulous job with this project, being co-founder CEO uh, along with Marcus, and I I think they deserve everything they've got coming to them. Um, you know, you start selling stock on the open market, I might take a little bit different of a twist here, but as long as this man is accumulating shares in his own company, I think that's a bullish sign uh, all the way across the board, and it's not just the top guy. Uh, it's upper management across the board that just over the last six months have been doing nothing but accumulating shares. And to my knowledge, there's not been one red cent sold on the open market of this company. I think, again, that speaks to the conviction of the upper management and how hard they're working, but also it's kind of easy to glean their belief in this project going forward. And the mission kind of speaks to itself on what Aduro is trying to do in tackling this 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 plastic problem here. Um, I've made a couple notes here, and, and I want to get this in under the wire and share with you guys. 
um, what will move the needle for Aduro? Okay. A lot of people will come to the channel social media, and I take a lot of scrutiny on social media. I take a lot of uh, positive, and, and that's just part of the territory that comes from putting your opinion out there on social media and, and, and trying to generate some churn around a topic that I do believe uh, is, is, um, is warranted. But what is going to move the needle for Aduro? I think what we have been subjected to over the last three years has subjected investors to be a little bit gun shy. I am one of them. Uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of bad beats coming out of you know the SPAC era, where the vast majority, 99% of the SPACs, no longer exist, or they have just fallen on such hard times that they'll never recover. They'll never recover. Uh, furthermore, coupled with high interest rates, the perceived lack of availability of financing on the markets and really just the the dry up of of pure animal spirits in the market that we enjoyed in the back half of last decade um it, it has just not materialized here in this new decade um do i think things are slowly starting to transition toward a more positive vibe in the market i do i do I think eventually these good companies will win out. It's not going to matter what the environment calls for. But I, t I tell you what, good companies will get scrutinized in unfavorable markets as opposed to be given favor uh, if if investors are a little bit on the fence as to whether or not something is going to materialize or not. And I tell you, everything in the microcap space is getting scrutinized. There are good companies doing good things right now that are not being provided due favor for that. I actually think Aduro is one of those. Uh, I look at the performance this year. I'm happy about it, but 17%. Uh, it really does not speak to the opportunity. It does not speak to the technology, and it does not speak to what Ofer and the team have done in 2023 uh, in way of building out the baseline for the company and really accelerating their customer engagement program. And, and, and I think 2024 is going to provide some of those looming catalysts. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I think Aduro really could and will uh, over the coming 12 to 24 months provide a little bit more color around their uh, uh, status financially and their inability to seek out new debt financing on the market. Uh, Aduro really separates itself. Um, I, you know, Mina Bechet, I, I think is one of the best in the industry. I, I'm not alone in that opinion. Uh, it's just an absolutely phenomenal job of navigating this company through what I feel has been tough markets. Now, Aduro has really performed well. I will say that it has it has upheld its stock performance over the last, let's say, 12 to 24 months. Going forward, I don't expect any less from 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 our CFO in in navigating and really looking to um, put financing where it is necessary to do so, uh, but to do so carefully and calculatively. I've been given no indication um, that share owner value isn't right top, if not the top priority of upper management, uh, and and it is in it is really reflected in the company's performance in uh, establishing a baseline and and hope for the future in putting themselves in this position in not having to seek out financing in a market that may be may view that as a as a negative attribute of a company that may be perceived as uh, you know more desperate or or needing that financing those companies that i reviewed in that list of 20 some of them are desperate like they have to have the financing to continue to operate and some of them are within 12 months of going illiquid and that that's a scary thing so when I'm looking at it from an investor's perspective, I, I I would like to see more fortification on the bottom line. I mean, five, six million bucks or whatever Aduro has on the books is a far cry from what I want to see for available cash on the books, certainly. And they're not in a time right now where you know expected revenues on the top line are coming from multiple, multiple sources. We'll talk about that as well. But I think their ability to navigate what I would consider to be fairly lean times, they've been successful, you know, in their stock offering packages and 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 getting uh, private financing uh, along the line here to kind of help Aduro make possible what they've been able to sow in the open market so far. 
I, I see no reason for that to actually not get easier into the future. So those are a couple of things that I, I think may end up moving the needle in giving the share owners and the grander financial markets some sort of of, of pause uh, in being hypercritical over Aduro's current financial position. All right. The last thing I will talk about is what I expect over the next 12 months for Aduro. This is going to be fun. Um, this is going to be a little speculation. It should drive a little bit of discussion, and I invite you to leave that discussion in the comments below. Where do you think Aduro is going to go? I mean, this is part of the fun of investing. Investing is fun. Um, you, you know, making money is a byproduct. I've invested my whole life. I've made a lot of money investing. It's a byproduct of investing, yada, yada. Okay. Um, there, there's no guarantee in investing. But I tell you what, when I look at this Aduro opportunity top to bottom, I don't see a lot of negative. And the deltas that I will share with you now, because I think sometimes I, I watch Aduro videos, you know, we're, we're, we're positive across the board, top to bottom. And I've always been taught to try to use your imagination in trying to apply the what if. What if Aduro can't do this? What if the technology isn't as prescribed? What if they do incur a, a situation where they need to raise financing uh, during a lean time? What if, what if, what if? Now, this is somewhat speculative and somewhat presumptuous on my part, but I think it really speaks to kind of the, not the bearish thesis, but the other side of the coin when we're looking at evaluating a company fundamentally, okay? And fundamentally, I saw some things out of that list of the companies that I looked at and I was like, man, I wish Aduro had that right now. Now I give Aduro a pass now based on the timeline that they have provided to share owners in really just kind of understanding that those, th those things are forthcoming, but they are not here now. And they have been disclosed by other companies, even in the private markets, right? Which means nothing for me as somebody who wants to get a hold of a privately, a, a publicly traded company as early as I, I can in the game, because that's where the money is made. Let's be real. Those private companies, they're going to come public someday if they ever do. And those are going to come public at multi-billion dollar valuations, because right now they have plants established, they're making revenue, they're making product, however efficient that might be, right? But uh, one company specifically, I believe it was plastic recycling. Yeah, I believe it was plastic energy that when I went on their website, I saw there was 10 products that their circular plastic made by plastic energy was contained with. Um, and that was something that kind of set me back and put me at pause a little bit. I, you know, that'd be awesome to see a plastic product, right? As much as the plastic products that we have in our environment and how how much we rely on plastic, it'd be awesome to see uh, plastic produced by Aduro, right? This plastic is circular plastic uh, produced by Aduro. I just think that'd be awesome validation because I think right now we're stuck in a little bit of a, um, I, I've done my due diligence up, down. I, I've visited the facility at Aduro for crying out loud. And I would venture to guess that I don't think it's common knowledge uh, out there for the would-be even share owner in the company, let alone people who are making their way to this technology for the first time and can explain with some level of accuracy what hydrochemolytic technology is. And I think everybody can wrap their mind around even a vial of produced product on the back end of the reactor. But I think when it really hits home and really kind of brings home that circular economy that we're all seeking then we can look at a, a, a product, a plastic product and say, okay, this was as a result of the Aduro process. And, and I think those things are inevitable and certainly not to rush things along, but some of the companies out there, especially on the private side are, are in that scale. And it's up to you to delineate whether or not you think that those are worthwhile processes, whether or not by rushing to market was in their best interest. Uh, and so but I think for Aduro, if I was going to be a little bit critical, I would say to drop the hush-hush, okay? Now, 
I say that tongue in cheek because I want Duro to exercise their right to hush hush right now, release information when it is appropriate to do so. Ofer Vikas has talked about this, and I respect that 100%. But here's the thing. You got public companies out there announcing finalization of full scale production facilities. You're talking about private companies out there that are sharing information on the public forum, even though they're private companies, with regard to their um, approach to bringing in waste plastics to a facility and turning out that waste plastic to their proprietary technology and then rendering a product that can be sold and is being sold on the back end. When I look at a Duro, it's not quite as defined for me. Now, this is my objective opinion, and I would put this into let's see category. And when we start to see these customers that, you know, half of the customers are secretive, um, that we that we actually come out and both parties feel comfortable making that uh, um, uh, solidification in public markets. And what that's going to look like in real time, I really think is going to embolden this message. So albeit that we uh, in 2023 have been very, very hush hush, especially about the game changer program, I totally get it. Um, I would look to, to, for those to um, start to blossom and materialize as we're being provided more color as, a poor, as opposed to less going forward. And I think that's really going to solidify the Aduro Clean Technologies technology uh, and, and more real people can look at it and say, okay, yeah, I get it. I don't get hydrochemolytic, but I get it. I see Aduro's name on the side of this big company and here's the process from a to z and here's what it's going to render on the back end and this is exciting stuff we are void of that right now my friends and when i look at it i look over the next 12 months to maybe get a significant more color around those uh pending initiatives with the company solidify or materialize partnerships right now i see a few I looked at some of those private companies, Lionel Bissell, uh, Dow Chemical, um, many, many others, large uh, chemical companies, large oil companies that are doing business with these other companies. You know, I, I appreciate the Shell Game Changer program, but what it, what has that truly meant for the company? Has that that been the reason for the 17% increase in presuming that that's somehow going to materialize into something? Uh, what about the secret? multi-billion dollar company. We don't know what's going to materialize out of that. We know that there's been a 450% increase in infusion into the R&D or the customer engagement that they've got going on. What What is that going to mean for Aduro in real time? And I, I think I have more questions than answers on that. And I give Aduro a pass on that because they are not in that time where they can actually announce those things to the greater audience, all right? A grow client list. I, I think we need to have you know, 10, 20, 25, 30, 50 clients, you know, once we start to embolden these commitments with the Duro and, and start to subject the technology to multiple customer engagements, I really think that's going to continue to fortify and add merit to the technology. Um, they need to continue to grow revenues. Um, my friends, their revenues right now are pretty light. Um, they are making those revenues from two out of the three verticals. I believe the last revenue stream that I saw was around $58,000. That's pretty light, right? For a company that, you know, it, okay, it's a $60 million valuation, but they need to fortify that that top end. They need to start to bring in some significant revenues. Now, as we progress to those significant revenues, I understand that there's going to be off quarters. I understand that there's going to be revenue drops and revenue fluctuations. This company is just getting its bearing and going full force into an addressable market to the tune of $200 billion. Okay, so it's expected that they grab big swaths of it. And then while they're working on those big swaths are going to potentially even miss out on some of the other low hanging fruit. All right. But they need to fortify that top line. They really do. Um, that really, when you look at the financials and you put the Aduro Clean Technology story aside, that balance sheet and those income statements and cash flow statement, that those really have to shine 
And, and right now we're in the early stages of, of solidifying those relationships that are going to add value to the top line. And, and that's what I foresee in the next 12 months coming down the pike is a fortification of the financial statements with the Duro. Um, I, I, I would like to end the video by just saying this. We're going to end 2023 up uh, on on the stock, on the opportunity. Uh, I'm eagerly awaiting uh, some some words from the CEO about what he expects in 2024. He typically tries to coin uh, what we're what we're forecasting for the follow-on year. I cannot expect, based on this baseline that's been set over the last 24 months, that 2024 is going to be anything less than exciting. I, I just don't see it. Um, because they've really started to accelerate in the back half of 2023 with their customer engagements. Uh, I'd like to understand uh, a lot more color on the interest in the program, where their focus is. Is, is it to complete Game Changer and what's going to come out of that? Will that open them up? Will it close them up? Uh, will they get bought out? <laughs> you know, th these are all justifiable questions for a, a, a retail share owner in the company that is looking to convey uh, their story, pay it forward. Um, again, I, I've declared my share position is set. I'm long the shares. Uh, I'm not looking to get a bump in the shares to, you know, two or $3 in the share and sell out of the company. I'm not looking that. My first look comes at $10 a share, which is quite frankly, where I value the company now, especially based on the competition that I read um, that uh, Aduro was placed with in company yesterday, right? I, I, I think Aduro sports a significantly higher valuation than the 60 million that it sports now. Um, this is the calm before the storm, my friends. I'll continue to pay forward uh, my information that I have at the time of sharing it. We will continue to um, uh, look for new information. Uh, we will uh, discuss that. And we will pay that forward through the channel as appropriate going forward as Aduro continues to evolve in this story going into 2024. Exciting times, my friends. Stay with the message. If you enjoy it, hell, subscribe to the channel, man. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the notification bell. You'll be notified of new content put online by the independent investor. I'm glad to be with you guys. I'm glad to be delivering this front. It's a hell of an initiative to get behind. There's no doubt about it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. And good luck in your investment future.